Brendan Dassey trial transcript day 5 continuing on page 71. Okay, isn't it true that as a technique of interrogation that uh, you want this subject, so to speak, to be comfortable in your presence? Certainly is, yes. And that's somewhat of a test when you move in a little bit closer to somebody, isn't it? Uh, it's not a test, it's a technique that we use and when we move in on somebody, what that does, it takes them out of their comfort zone. If you saw me in that interview, I got a little closer to him. I put my knee on, or excuse me, hand on his knee. What that does is breaks down barriers because he's got a barrier up against us. Okay. And when you walk over and you get close to them, uh, that's what you're doing. That's what you're attempting to do. But that was not, pardon me, that was not my attempt when I sat on the couch. Earlier, it was when you saw me go over and put my hand on his knee. Absolutely. Well, in addition to his knee, you acknowledged that you patted him on the back, right? Sure. Okay, before you talked with him on the 27th, did you know anything about his IQ? What I knew about Brendan Dassey was that he was in, did you know anything about his IQ? Answer, unintelligible. The court. Here, one at a time, re-ask the question, please. Did you know anything about his IQ as of February 27 when you first spoke with him? Yes or no? About his IQ? No. Did you know anything about his memory? Whether it was good, bad, poor? You didn't, did you? No. Would you agree with me that throughout the course of the contacts you had with Brendan, that oftentimes he would be asked more than one question at a single time before he was allowed to answer? In the March interview, are you referring to? Generally, as to March and February. I can't give you any specifics. I mean, everybody saw the interview. I'm sure there were those occasions, sure. Directing your attention um, on page 446, during the course of the contact on the 27th, and I'm looking at the very bottom paragraph, mm-hmm, you told him in part, this will bug you till the day you die unless you're honest about it, right? Yes, and I still believe that. Now, if you would, take a look at from the beginning of where you begin to speak at the bottom of 446 over to page 447, about halfway down where you see the first entry where it says Brendan? Yes. All right, immediately above the reference where it says Brendan, about halfway down on 447, it's, it is stated to him, I think you're being starting to be honest with us about some things right now, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, from the top, bottom of 446, where you begin to speak, all the way through the middle of 447, when that statement is made, he hasn't said a single word to you, has he? I think you're taking it a bit out of context, but 146 can't question, no, um, he hasn't, but before that, yeah, he has. Well, it's fair to say that you guys, you and Fossbender, are doing a lot of talking. He's not saying much, right? I'd have to review the stuff prior to this. I can't say that right now without reading this over. If you'd like me to, I would. No, you don't need to. Okay. Page 448. Do you think it is a promise? On the first entry by your name, detective, do you think it's a promise to him when you say, we'll go to bat for you, but you have to be honest with us? That's absolutely a promise, and I absolutely meant that at the time. And you additionally, I take it you would, your answer would be the same about halfway down on that page when it is stated to him in your presence by uh, Agent Fossbender, I promise you I'll not let you hang out there alone, but we got to have the truth right? My same answer, you bet. Okay, on page 451, please, you told him it's not your fault. Remember that, correct? Yes, I did. Okay, and up, and he really hasn't said anything to you at that point, significant, has he? Again, I won't comment on that unless you want me to read what he said prior to that. No, that's fine. Okay, but you acknowledge making that statement, it's not your fault, right? I certainly did. And then immediately thereafter, Fossbender uh, follows up without any sort of response from Brendan. Yeah, it's not your fault. Like I said, Mark and I are not going to leave you high and dry, right? Again, I said it and I meant it. Well, did you, you didn't say it, Fossbender said it. Things before when I said, it's not your fault, if I said it, I meant it. Right, and you acknowledge that prior to Brendan even responding in any way, shape, or form, or being asked for a response, it's, your statement is immediately followed up by Fossbender reiterating that very thought that it's not his fault, that he hasn't done anything wrong, right? Are you saying that's what he says after me? Yeah, that's what he says after me. Okay, certainly. And further down, is it not the, the question is given to him, quote, what other parts did you see, right? Yep. And isn't it true that at no time prior to that statement being made to him, did he acknowledge seeing any parts? Again, I won't comment on them unless you want me to read everything prior to this, but right after that he says toes. He saw toes. 
Attorney Edelstein begging the court's indulgence in order to have the witness answer my question, I would ask that he be given an opportunity to review this in order to answer that question. The court, review what? Attorney Edelstein, pardon me? The court, review what? Attorney Edelstein, the witness indicated he would like an opportunity to re review the portion of the exhibit before him prior to that statement being made to him on page 450, to my client on 451 in order to answer the question. The question being, he had not, prior to you making that statement, indicated he saw any parts? The court, so you want him to read the 12 pages before that? Attorney Edelstein, if that's the only way he can answer the question. Attorney Fallon, Your Honor, uh, if I may, I guess I'm going to object. It's not that I have any objection to the officer reviewing the report or whatever. I'm going to go back to the to an earlier point, and I fail to see the relevance of, of the events two days before as it pertains to this particular um, cross-examination vis-a-vis uh, -vis the inculpatory statement obtained on March 1. I mean, that's two days earlier. It's of marginal relevance. That's my concern. I don't have any... The officer can read it if he wishes. That's fine. The court, yeah, well... Attorney Fallon, it seems cumulative. The court, and it may well be cumulative. I think I think it passes the relevance test, and I'm going to override your overrule your objection. I, I don't want to be in a position where every time an answer is given that we're going back and rereading things because we, we're going to be here all night. I'm going to suggest counsel you just proceed. Get the answers the officer gives, and we'll move on from there. Attorney Edelstein, well, if it's going to assist him to answer the question, he has the materials available. I think uh, he can refresh his memory with that in order to answer the question. The witness, I'll do the best I can. The court, just ask. Attorney Edelstein, isn't it true, and I'm making reference to page 451, that Agent Fossbender, in your presence on the 27th, suggested by asking Brendan Dassey as follows. Okay, a human body, dot, dot, dot. Isn't it true that prior to that phrase, a human body being uttered by Agent Fossbender, that Brendan Dassey never said anything about seeing a human body? Well, you can't tell from the transcript because that was the looks like the inaudible part of the transcript. So, I mean, you know as much as what Brendan said as I do. It says, I seen dot dot dot. Nowhere does it say, prior to Fossbender making that suggestion in that form of a question, that there was a human body, correct? He says he sees toes. He said he saw toes prior to that, but he did not say he saw a human body, correct? Again, I can't remember, I can't answer that because it's, it's not here. It's on the inaudible part, I believe. I'm assuming it's do you believe it's on the inaudible part? Do you have a distinct recollection of that? Or is that just a, well, convenience of testimony today? The court, here, let him finish the question before you start answering. Attorney Fallon, I, that's argumentative. I ask that it, the court, well, it's, Attorney Fallon, be stricken. The court, I'm going to let the question stand. Answer it if you can. The witness, if it's prior to the videotape statement, which I believe it is, which I indicated when we talked about that statement, that's why we went to Two Rivers. It's an inaudible part, and I believe that, that that's what's meant by the dot, dot, dot. But you don't know what's in contained in the inaudible part, do you? No, that's why we did the next videotape statement. Well, you're certainly not suggesting that there are significant portions of this statement that we are presently discussing that are inaudible, are you? Yeah, I am. Going to page 453? Yes. Keeping in mind that, well, let me ask you this, by the time you got to this part in your contact with Brendan, didn't it occur to you that he had some cognitive limitations? No, he was a mainstream student at Michigan High School. He was in driver's ed. He could answer questions. He could understand. No, and I think it's evident from watching the prior video, okay, that he can understand. I didn't ask you what was evident to you. I'm not an expert in cognitive abilities, if that's what you're asking. I didn't ask if you were an expert. I just asked if you believed he had cognitive deficits. My answer was no. All right, on page 453, you asked him, am I correct? Would you say yes or no for me, Brendan? You see that? Uh, just give me, yes, I do see that. Yes, sir. And without giving the response, is it fair to say that he did exactly what you requested of him, i.e., say yes or no? No, I asked him a question, and he answered the, you asked him, go ahead. I asked him, would you say yes or no? Yes or no for me, Brendan? And he says yes. All right, so he did exactly what you asked him to do? He answered. Say yes or no. My question. He answered my question. The question was, would you say yes or no for me, Brendan, right? He answers yes. And that's how he answered? That's how he answered my question. Go a little further down there, detective. Um, the statement was made to him on the 27th. For, for your convenience, about four lines up, a portion of it, uh, did you help him put that body in the fire? If you did, it's okay. You acknowledge you made that statement to him? I did make that statement to him, yes. 
Were you attempting to persuade him that if, in fact, he did such a thing, i.e. putting a body in a fire, that it was all right? What you do in an interview is people, I'm not asking for an explanation. Answer unintelligible. Minimize. I'm asking for an answer. My question is, answer, I think I'd have to expound on that answer. Attorney Edelstein, Your Honor, I'm just, he's entitled to be rehabilitated later. The court, yeah, just answer the question, please. The witness, could you just ask it again? how you'd like to attorney Edelstein I'm sorry could you read it back please question read back by court reporter answer was I attempting to persuade him yes attorney Edelstein all right were you attempting to persuade him that what he did was as you put it okay yes all right now as a trained investigator with 14 is it 15 I can't about 14 all right 14 years you know that's not true right somebody puts a body in a fire it's not okay right it's not okay so you acknowledge that that you called it deception, I call it a lie, we call it whatever we want, but it's not true, is it? It's not okay to put a body in a fire, that's true. And the statement that you made to him was, I guess you would characterize it as a deception. You can call it a lie if you wish. I, I certainly will. That is true. Thank you. Detective Wiegert, uh, as a result of you being lead investigator, along with Agent Fossbender in this case, you've had an opportunity to be present throughout the proceedings, correct? Yes. Okay, so you've had the benefit of being able to hear what all the other witnesses of this witnesses have said prior to your opportunity to testify? That's correct, I've been here the whole time. And you heard Nick Stalky testify, right? I did. Okay, he's our blood spatter man? Yes. Okay, had, had prior to this case, had you ever been involved in any cases that uh, might have used blood, blood spatter evidence? Blood spatter evidence? No. Brendan was asked, was he not on the 27th, and I'm making reference to at 4.59? I'm there. Okay, about the middle of the page, question, did he say anything about shooting her? You asked him that, right? Yes. Okay, and you knew by the time you conducted this interview, interrogation, whatever you want to call it, that there was evidence of a gunshot wound to Teresa Halbach. Isn't that true? That is correct, yes. Is it fair to say that you did not follow up with that particular question, um, and I'm making reference to the shooting her question, any time soon following the time it was first proposed to him during the course of the interview? Attorney Fallon, objection, vague, indefinite. The court, well, I have a, a relevance concern about that. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, Attorney Edelstein? Well, let me, that was poorly phrased, Your Honor. Let me try in a different way. The court, I agree. Attorney Edelstein, you knew, based upon your role as one of the co-lead investigators, there was evidence of a gunshot wound on that day when you did the interview? We learned about it right in that time frame that there was possible gunshot wounds. That's correct. All right, um, but if you would, take a look at 459 then. Yes, sir. Just on that page alone, is it correct that there are five questions given to him after your question to him, quote, did he say anything about shooting her? That would be accurate, yes. Okay, none of them are a follow-up as to having anything to do with shooting, correct? That's correct. Okay, page 463, please. Okay, top third. I guess everything prior to the first entry for Fossbender, you stated to him you didn't see it. He, did he tell you about it? Correct? That's the question, yes. All right, apparently there's no response, right? Yeah, there's nothing there. And then the next entry, again, it's you speaking to Brendan. No, as in a question. No? Say yes or no. Is that when it says, and this is what you said to him? That's what it says. A lot of times he would use head yes or no's. That's why that might not be there. But uh, you're correct in saying that's what I say next. Yes. And, and again, he did exactly what you told him to do, and that is say yes or no as his next response. He answered the question I asked, yes. Well, it really wasn't a question. It was a command, wasn't it? Say yes or no. That's not a question, is it? Call it a statement, sure. Pardon me? It's a statement. Well, you're telling him to do something, are you not? Yes. And he does. Does he not? He does. Okay, on page 463, Attorney Edelstein, can you drop down a little bit? <clears throat> the question was put to him, did he say where he cut himself? And Agent Fossbender's making reference to Stephen Avery, right? Yes. Okay, and there's, there's no response, right? That's true. Fossbender then suggests, I need to just back up a little bit. I can't say there's no response. There may be an audible. There may have been a response, but there's nothing in the text. You're, all right, correct on that. Okay, and then Fossbender follows up immediately with, on the knife that he used to kill her, yes or no, correct? Yeah, that's what he says. Okay, the next entry being, yeah, that's correct. 
do you know whether or not and can you tell this jury whether or not the response yeah from brendan was an answer to the fassbender inquiry did he say he cut himself or whether it was a response to the statement fassbender makes on the, the knife that he used to kill her yes or no